Hello, now I'm going to tell you about the external features of the human kidney and the relations, you know, visceral peritoneal relations and inferior posterior surfaces and the differences in both the kidneys. Okay, so the external features when you find a kidney, of course, it's a veiny form, it is a you know, um, bean shaped structure which has a you know anteriorly it's slightly convex posterior also it's slightly convex lateral border is con convex laterally and the needle border is concave and having a depression called the renal sinus and that actually opening is called the uh, you know the depression on the surface is called the hilum of the kidney so this kidney has an upper pole and a lower pole upper pole you know is broader lower pole is narrower upper pole is immediately or directly related to the suprarenal gland both the sides lower pole is a little pointed and it is at a you know it's just at a distance of about 2.5 centimeters from the iliac crest got it then the two borders they have two poles two borders and two surfaces so the lateral border is convex and in case of the right kidney the lateral border is related this to the right lobe of the liver and now below it is related to the right or the flexure of the colon or the hepatic flexure of the colon so these are the two structures which are related to the lateral border of the right kidney that is right lobe of the liver and the hepatic pressure of the colon. Now talking about the lateral because upper and uh, the relations of upper pole and lower pole is same in both the kidneys suprarenal and a distance of 2.5 uh, centimeters from the iliac crest. Now talking about the lateral relations of the left kidney. So in the left kidney this upper portion will be related to the spleen right upper portion of the uh, upper half of the lateral border will be related to the spleen and the lower portion of the lateral border will be related here uh, you know this is the splenic flexure of the colon and then the descending colon actually it will be the descending colon that will be related to the lateral border of the left kidney yes i was telling you about the medial lateral uh, 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 relations the medial and lateral border of the left kidney upper pole lower pole has been fixed now what remains is the relations of the anterior surface of the left and right kidney you even get to draw a diagram to you know explain this so that's i told you that we have two kidneys on the right side this one is on the left side so we need talking about the right kidney right so anterior relations i told you an anterior surface of the uh, kidney is irregular posterior is smooth so anterior really anterior surface is irregular because it's viscerous uh, overlying to this so remember that this anterior surface in you know um, along this medial border right towards the hilum right it will be the second part of the duodenum the second part of the duodenum will be you know overlapping to this hilum and the needle border of the kidney on the right side superiorly i just told you it was suprarenal gland then you have much of the area will be overlapped by the liver got it so it's liver placed here then here you'll have is the colic reflection here also, you know this will be related to the right uh, colic flexion or the hepatic flexion colon will be related and also the small intestine, the loops of the small intestine will also be related to the medial portion of the lower end of the kidney on its anterior surface. So these were the relations with the anterior surface, but if it's asked what portion of this uh, anterior surface of the right kidney is covered by peritoneum. So remember those structures which are, you know, Peritoneal structure, you know, which visa, the viscera, which is already peritoneal covered, will have a reflection over to the kidney. So the peritoneal reflections which you find here will be overlying to this hepatic surface, right? This area will be covered by peritoneum and the portion of this small intestine. So this, these two surfaces will be covered by peritoneum directly touching the peritoneum will be touching here on this 
uh, in uh, intestinal impression and also on to this hepatic impression okay now in the left kidney in the left kidney you can see that this uh, is suprarenal gland that is already fixed in this gland, uh, kidney so upper surface is and upper portion of this uh, you know spleen upper portion of this left kidney is covered by suprarenal gland it is related to suprarenal gland then much of its upper portion is lately is related to the spleen then here you have is the area related to the stomach then this much portion here it is related to the pancreas and because it's related to pancreas it will also be related to the splenic vessels splenic vein and splenic artery above to that that will be related here and down below will be the jejunum right so the loops of the jejunum will be related anteriorly in the lower end and lower end and laterally i already told you it will be the descending colon that will be related anteriorly now if it's at what what portion of this kidney will be covered by peritoneum again same fund applies that those viscera which are which are peritoneal covered structures they will have their peritoneal reflections onto the kidney so it will be the gastric impression which will be covered by peritoneum splenic impression which will be covered by peritoneum and the jejunal impression that will also be covered by peritoneum got it so that was about the anterior relations now talking about the posterior relations of the kidney posterior surface i told you comparatively is smoother and uniform the reason is it's resting on to the bed of the kidney which is being formed by the muscles posterior muscles the posterior abdominal wall and you know that is sos major quadriceps lumborum and transversus abdominis now the posterior relation i mean like you know i'm showing you is this right kidney so i'm reflecting it like this right so sorry so when you see it on the posterior surface uh, this is the posterior surface of the this is the right kidney and here i'm showing you the posterior surface so the posterior surface on its upper portion will be covered by the diaphragm so this will be you know this portion is already in relation to the diaphragm so diaphragmatic surface will be here then you know diaphragm because it's it is the uh, you know it is from the upper border of the t12 vertebrae so when it reaches the upper border of t12 vertebrae there will be you know at the lower border of t12 there was this medial and later there was this medial and lateral arcuate ligaments right and medial to that was the crust of the diaphragm so remember that crust of the diaphragm is not in direct relation to the posterior surface of the kidneys so posteriorly you will find is the medial arcuate and the lateral arcuate ligament so what structures pass through this lateral arcuate ligament will be the subcostal nerve and vessels they will also be in relation in a posterior relation the muscles i already told you in the medial portion it will be called sos major then later to the that will be quadratus lumborum and even later to that will be the transversus abdominis so these will be the three muscles in posterior relation to both the kidneys right and Uh, between sos major and quadratus lumborum there will be two nerves arising and they both are from l1 spinal segment upper one will be ilio hypogastric nerve and the lower one will be ilio inguinal nerve so three nerves subcostal nerve ilio hypogastric ilio inguinal the three nerves will be in posterior relation to both the kidneys till now whatever relations in the posterior surface i have taught you is common in both the kidneys right so once again a past revision posterior we will see the kidneys upper portion will be by diaphragm it will be resting with the diaphragm then you have medial and lateral crest below to the lateral crest it will must cause some other muscle rising then posteriorly you have these muscles sos major quadratus lumborum and fascia muscles you know this transversal abdominis and the nerves emerging out from between sos major and quadratus lumborum will be ilio hypogastric above and ilio right so these are the posterior relations which are common to the both the kidneys the only difference in posterior relations will be because of the positioning of the kidney because you know the left kidney is placed a little higher and this is the right kidney is placed a little below so what happens this uh, left kidney will have an additional impression don't forget one was missed because this upper diaphragm posterior relations the diaphragmatic surface 
you will also have an impression of the 12th rib because I told you once again remember that the upper pole of the kidney reaches at the level of the upper border of the T12 vertebrae and what arises from the later portion of the 12th vertebrae is the 12th rib so 12th rib is a common impression relation to both the kidneys and its posterior relation but being a little higher placed above what will happen is that this left kidney posteriorly will be related to both 11 and 12 that's the only one difference between the uh, posterior relations of the left and right kidneys. Got it? So that was about the relations of the kidneys.